Exhale, exhale, inhale. Positivity, exhale or negativity. Last time we had discussed, I think, asked attitude, skill and knowledge. Attitude is very important in life. If you have the right attitude, we can use that positive attitude to improve our skills or find out our hidden skills, hidden talents, apply the knowledge and be successful. Now we pray for the global family, think of the world around. Ask God to place his healing hand on each one of us. Seek God's blessing to overcome the situation. We pray for the SJC family. Think of each and around member of the SJC. Think of the office staff, your classroom, all the class 4 employees. Ask God to place his healing touch on each and everybody. Now come to your family. Pray especially for the great gift of your parents who sacrifice a lot so that you can get the best. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for all the teachers who are teaching you, making efforts to make your online classes successful. Pray for yourself. Ask God to give the right direction and place his healing hand on you. When we surrender to God, everything is possible. Believing strongly in God, one of you can say the family prayer. Shikha, please start the family. We bring to you, dear God, our families with all our hopes and dreams. Thank you for my family, for everything we share, for joy, laughter, tears, work, and for the unique gifts of each of us. Source of our love, bless us and all our kit and kin. Make us aglow with love, make us thoughtful, caring, generous and forgiving, joyful in service, and open to give and to receive. May our love and unity open our hearts to you and to the great human families to which we belong. May all families everywhere know true love, peace and security. May our families be a powerhouse of love, a source of healing and a place of joy. And may we treat one another with respect and love. For these graces we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. Providence of God. Watch over us. Providence of God. Watch over us. Providence of God. Watch over us. St. Joseph's. Pray for us. So increasing and decreasing function, just see, understand from this. If you just look at the graph, if some function y is equal to fx is given, and we draw the graph of that function. So how do we draw the graph of the function? By giving different values to x, finding the corresponding value of the function. Suppose we have drawn a graph like this, okay? This, so different values to x we are giving x1, some corresponding value we will get like this. So on this line, that is we are plotting x1, x2, x3, or it can be this point is 0, 1, 2, 3. Now when you plot the points, and suppose we are getting a graph like this, so you can observe that as x is increasing, just here, as x is increasing, this fx is also increasing or not? This point, coordinates of this particular point will be what? The coordinates of this point will be x1, comma, fx1. They are the coordinates of the point. Please do respond. This point will be x1, fx1. 
after some times we are moving to x2 so coordinate of this point will be what it will be coordinate of this point x2 comma x2 comma uh, fx2 fx right so you can just notice as x1 is increasing so this side when we move in this direction it is positive values and we when we move towards the left it is negative values so as x is increasing you can notice this fx is also increasing or not so this type of function is is increasing function a function is increasing if the value y means if the value y that is fx increases as the x value increases so for a function this is a condition as x increases if x1 is less than x2 f of x1 see from the figure x1 is less than x2 you can see f of x1 is less than f of x2 then the function in here you can see it is equal to sign function is simply said to be increasing and in this case when there is uh, this sign f of x1 is less than this is a strictly strict inequality then the function is strictly increasing so a little concept of increasing function simply when it is a rising graph suppose any other graph we draw like if it is a graph like this so you can just notice in this graph that as x is increasing like just see again i'll tell you suppose just simple one we graph we draw two graphs just observe this is one as you plot different points these points when we plot and suppose when we get a rising curve this is as you can see these values here we can see this is your x as this value of the function is increasing every time or not so this is an example of a increasing function and for a decreasing function just see the another graph if we draw simple idea from graph we plot again we plot some points and we find the corresponding value of the function if on joining those points we get a graph like this so this is what you can notice here in this case this is fx fx is decreasing here so as x is increasing f of x is decreasing this is the case of decreasing function so graphical idea about increasing and decreasing function is clear or not how the function is increasing how the function is decreasing yes or no yes ma'am now yes ma'am are studying under the application of derivatives okay so now next thing will be coming i'll just show the next screen this is decreasing function earlier like previous slide only i showed you the value decreases so just see it is coming down you can just notice this part f of x is decreasing over here though x is increasing x is moving in this direction but the value this is your value of the function this is the value of the function that is a vertical line okay so you just see first it is this then it is decreasing so in this case this is a decreasing function graph okay after that now again the same thing in a same graph like we can have variations you can just notice here one graph we are drawing some graph we are plotting giving different values to x and when we Mom, plot yes like huh Ma'am, please show the previous slide. Previous slide, okay. Just see the previous one. Okay, Just an idea. Then through calculus, we'll see how, where, how do we know whether the function is increasing or decreasing? So, like every time, we cannot draw the graph, na? So some predictions in economics, you have to do it. So some function. Yes, dear. Ma'am, I did not understand decreasing function and how we can determine the decreasing from the graph. From the graph, if I am saying we are drawing the graph of the function, some function is given to us. This can be some polynomial function, whatever function. We have exponential function log. Okay. So when I draw, how do we draw the graph? This we have done in tenth class. Simply for drawing the graph, what we do? We give different values. Like suppose I give x and we calculate the value some value of you will get over here then some one i will give value of function you will get we can give some negative values also to draw the graph then what we do we plot the points or not like one comma this is one point this one point like that the graph is clear how we draw the graph 
Now suppose on drawing the graph, when you draw the graph of this function and it takes this shape, some shape like this is coming. So you can observe on the y-axis we are plotting f of x and on the x-axis we are giving the values. So first value, here you can see this is f of x. Next, if you notice, after some time, so you can see from here this point is, suppose I am saying this point is x1, this point is x2. From the graph, you can see that f of x1 is greater than f of x2 or not? Do you agree to this? Yes, ma'am. So graph is coming down or not? And as we move further, again further like this. So we said graph. Ye to graph hai, this is a decreasing graph. It is coming down. Kuch production hai. Production in years hai. Suppose like in economics you study. Some production of wheat we are saying. 90, 91, kuch kar rahe, 92 like that. So production of wheat. If it is coming down, so from the graph you predict or not, as the year hota ja hai, aapka production decrease ho hai. From 90, we are showing some graph from 90 to 92. So this crop on the y-axis. So looking at the graph, we have to draw some conclusion. So you can say from 90 se leke 92 tak, there was a fall in the production of a particular crop. It is a decreasing graph or not? Getting it or not now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so yeah, okay. That, that is why we are studying this topic under your commerce thing. So, shall I change the slide now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now next slide. In a particular, now see, this is what we are saying, agar ye production hai. So now see, for a particular year, you can see the graph is increasing. Result ke upar bhi kaya sakte ho? For the, suppose we are plotting the class 12th result. Very apt example. Some years say like we are seeing the performance of the student from one particular year to other particular year and we are plotting the result. So you can see that from this particular point till this particular point, the result is showing an upper trend or not. That means the result was increasing, the percentage was very good. For a particular reason, this year it, it is showing a decreasing, the result is going down and then again it is increasing. So looking at this graph, now we can formulate something like what is a policy? We can bring a change in the policy. Ho sakta hai, ki why the result was, what were the reasons, what were the factors responsible for a downfall in the result during this year? Then working is done on that. Accordingly, some things are changed, some uh, new uh, policy are formulated like that. So this is a graph which is having both increasing and decreasing function. So just see in the definition, a function is increasing when it graph rises as it goes from left to right. As we are moving from left to right, the graph is increasing. A function is decreasing when its graph falls as it goes from left to right. It is falling now. So clear idea about graph, how what is increasing, what is decreasing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Shall I change the slide? Yes, ma Yes, ma'am. Now next is, this is some polynomial example again, see this is some polynomial example we have taken and we have plotted the graph of this function. When you plot it down, you will get to something like this. In what interval we are taking, say minus 1 to 2. Example is f of x is x cubed minus 4x for x in the interval minus 1 comma 2. So just see why this at this particular point. If I put, how do we plot the graph? How are you getting this graph? When you do the questions, this will be given like you can, every time we cannot plot the graph. So that is we'll calculus, this, uh, we'll be using differential calculus in finding out these intervals. Automatically from calculus, we'll be finding out intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing, right? It is not possible that every time you draw the graph and you predict the result. So that is how that handy tool, differential calculus. From that, we can find out from this particular point to this particular point, the function is increasing, decreasing, and then draw conclusions according to that. So now this, just understand this from graph, and then we come to calculus, how from calculus we can find out the intervals where function is increasing or decreasing. Now see how we are plotting this. This is the function. Say I give different value, x and the corresponding f of x. Now if you notice, suppose if I give x as equal to some negative value, minus 1. 
in this function if we find out f of minus 1 it will be minus 1 q this is just the explanation part the question part again will be very simple it will be minus 1 plus 4 so it is equal to 3 so at minus 1 this point is 1 comma 3 okay this we have plotted if i suppose so this is the point here i'll write it down minus 3 suppose i give a value one more negative value say f of minus 2 we calculate so minus 2 will be minus 2 ma'am wouldn't it be plus 3 in the table we'll be doing it na i'm just wait na let me do minus it will be equal to minus 8 and minus 4 into minus 2 so this is coming out equal to what it is zero or not So just notice this point. Yes. Minus two, the value is zero. That is why the graph is here. Okay. Similarly, you can notice if I give value zero, calculate f of zero. What will be f of zero from you? In the function, if you put zero, what will be the value of the function when zero. I zero? Zero. So just zero. notice the graph. This point zero comma this is point yes. Yes, ma'am. If I give value one, now tell me the value f of one. What will be the value f of one? Just substitute. Minus three. Minus three. Can you notice minus three graph is down? At one, it is down minus three. And one more value you can calculate f of two. And tell what is f of two? Substitute in this f of two. Zero. Zero. Yes, zero. Yes. So this is how we have plotted the graph. Like we have plotted the graph. Now in this, you notice in this particular interval, what are they saying? Starting only in this particular interval, we are observing the nature of the graph, where it is increasing, where it is decreasing. Okay. So see, from minus one to this is the point. This yellow shaded portion you can see that in the in between. In that, this is the point minus one. This is your point two. in this particular region only we are seeing where the function is increasing so you can notice that from minus 1 to what this point somewhere here. this is a downward trend function is going down so this is decreasing and after this the function takes up a trend so this particular point this is decreasing and from here the function is increasing so from graphical analysis it is clear now increasing decreasing water increasing and decreasing function function is decreasing decreasing okay now we'll see how we do it with the help of calculus okay so some idea of increasing decreasing is it is very simple with calculus when you do it in calculus there will be uh, like you have to find out the intervals So how we do that? That I'll tell you now. Shall I change the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what exactly we have to do? The steps for finding the function increasing. First, just take down. This is called the algorithm. Then I'll just explain it to you how we are doing it. that is the steps to find out where the intervals find the intervals algorithm is what to find intervals where function is increasing or decreasing to find intervals where function some function fx is increasing and decreasing increasing and decreasing so see what you have to do step 1 in this first step will be the function is already given to us question will be some function is given find the intervals in which this particular function whatever function is increasing or decreasing so first step in this will be find f dash x f dash x means it is what first derivative we know how to differentiate first derivative simply just differentiating that 
differentiation will be simple polynomial you already know so in this we might be using the formula derivative of x to the power n what is derivative of x to the power n n x n minus 1 n x to the power n minus 1 okay you should know this with this please remember this also what is derivative of simply x 1 and 1 remember this thing and what is derivative of some constant into x log constant and x constant in only constant okay derivative of constant in, these are the commonly used derivatives in such type of and lastly we will be using what is derivative of constant zero zero all this will be using you should be thorough with them okay now first step is find f dash x f dash x means the first derivative like say for example if some function is given say function is x to the power 4 upon 3 minus 4x cube plus 6x square minus 1 my question is find f dash of x f dash x means you just have to differentiate this and give the answer so f dash of x who will give the answer for this using these facts written over here first one will be x to the power 4 upon 3 anybody mam 4x cube 4x cube upon 3 upon 3 how do you did that with the mam mam i used the first identity x to the power n is equals to nx to the power n minus 1 and this also 1 upon 3 is constant yes mam 1 upon 3x 1 upon 3 is a constant we have written as it is and then we have differentiated x to the power 4 okay Next, any uh, other girl can tell what is differentiation of 4x cube? Uh, minus 12x square. Minus 12x square. Four constant as it is, and differentiation of x cube, right? Then plus next 12x. 12x. And last is zero. So this is how we are going to differentiate. I hope this is clear. Previous knowledge, yes. Differentiation yes. Like, like this. Now that is the first step. you can do it just differentiate it okay second step will be in this step 2 just this please transfer it in your formula copy in between the sessions you can just have a look at it step 2 is equate f dash x is equal to 0 to get the turning points i'll just explain you what are the turning points that i'll explain you to get the turning points equate f dash x to 0 to get the turning points to get the turning points just stick on this point then i'll explain you in the previous slide what are the turning points equate f dash x is equal to 0 to get the turning points okay just to see this this graph we said na in this graph these are the turning points like this point suppose this is point minus 1 and this particular point this point they are the turning point turning point means what till this part till this part function is increasing from here till minus 1 it is increasing and this point it changes to a decreasing function so from we say whatever this point to this point function is increasing from here it becomes a decreasing function and then again it becomes an increasing function so these points these at these points if you draw these type of tangents they are known as what is tangent to a curve we know that if tangent to a circle is like this 
so this particular lines they are tangent to the curve okay these points are tangent to the curve at these points you can observe that tangent to the curves are parallel to x axis or not we agree tangents to the curve are parallel to x axis they are known as a turning points so this turning points how do we get these turning points we get by equating the first derivative to zero or oh, got it or not yes ma'am right any other graph if i draw it suppose we draw some other graph this is your graph so these points this point c1 c2 and c3 at these points just observe if i draw tangent to the graph these are tangent to the graph tangent touches the graph at one point so these particular points or these lines are parallel to x axis so c1 c2 and c3 they are called the turning points means turning points means you can observe that in this till this point function is an increasing function it is a rising curve it then it decreases then at this particular point it changes path yet here the function is decreasing again the function is increasing and the function is decreasing so i can say from c1 to c2 if you look at the interval c1 to c2 the function is what nature of the function is decreasing from c1 to c2 then again from c2 to c3 what is the nature of the function increasing increasing so to get these points as i told you we cannot draw the graph every time so how do we get these turning points by equating f dash x to 0 we get these turning points okay that is the second step now once we i'll change the slide next slide there also i will show it the graph so these we get the turning points now these turning points some names are there for turning points also turning points are also called critical points they are also called turning points are also called the critical points <laughs> they are the points of maximum and minimum this is the next application that we are going to do maximum and minimum this when it comes then again i'll explain it to you they are points of maxima and minimum just right now take it down when that application we start again i'll tell you what what do you mean by maxima and minimum so first step once we do a question it will be very simple okay first step is find f dash x second step is equate f dash x to zero to get the turning points and step 3 step 3 suppose turning points are step 3 is suppose suppose we are getting suppose c1 c2 c3 are turning points are turning points so intervals will be intervals will be c from this graph same graph i'll write again here some graph we are having this is a graph turning points we are saying this is one turning point c1 this is your second turning point c2 and the third turning point is c3 this is your third. till this it is clear what we are doing is yes, from you will not draw the graph okay in questions you won't draw it in just to explain it i'm showing you in the graph so these are the turning points how did we get them we got them by equating f dash x to 0 now these turning points the step 4 is that is the last step 
and one more step the concluding step. Step four will be. One question, all questions are same. Step four. With the help of turning points, we write the intervals. Turning points help us in locating the interval. So intervals will be now. Now intervals will be. First interval. See one interval is in this side. This side, this is one interval. So like since there is no fixed point over here, the first interval, this side we can take it as interval will be the first interval will be minus infinity to C1. The first interval will be minus infinity to C1 and we take open interval. Reason also I will tell you why we are taking open interval. The first interval minus infinity. Why we are taking minus infinity because the graph can extend this side. OK, so this interval first interval we have taken this second interval will be what is the second interval from the figure? This is the second interval. So how can we write this interval from? C1 to C2 is the second interval. Third interval will be what? Can anybody tell me third interval from the figure? To, uh, ma'am, C2 to infinity. C2 to no, not from the figure. C2 to infinity, no. Third interval. C2 to C3. C2 to C3. Yes, third interval from the figure is C2 to C3. And the fourth interval. C3 to this side. Infinity. C3 to infinity. That is the fourth interval. C3 to infinity. C3 to infinity. This is the step four and the last step is now conclusion. Now one note, one note you can write. Just see one note is. In this just see there are three critical points. C1, C2, C3, three critical points are giving us how many intervals? Four intervals. First interval, second interval, third interval and fourth interval. So note you can write down. Three critical points are giving us how many interval four intervals. So two critical points will give you how many intervals? Three intervals. Yes, two will give you three intervals. OK, and four critical points will give us how many intervals? Five intervals. Five. So in general, n critical points will give us how many intervals? N plus one. N plus one. And N plus one, OK, N plus one. Two critical one like that. Now, how do we draw? Once we know the intervals, now we have to draw conclusion, OK? How do we draw the conclusion that in this interval function is increasing? In this interval function is increasing or decreasing? That conclusion has to be drawn. So what we do is the last step. After this, we take one question, so it will be absolutely clear. And very important question. Very scoring also very simple question. Only this much in this topic, OK? See, now what we do to draw the conclusion. Suppose I take case one, case one, uh, case one, I am taking the. First interval. Case one, take the first interval is. Minus infinity to C1. Take this interval. In this, what you know, this, this is into suppose this point. Suppose I am saying this point is say uh, I take the point. This as two. suppose this point is two. So what we do is you just write down F dash X. Already we have found this in the first step F dash X in this F dash X. Please listen carefully in this F dash X. Just find the value of F dash X for some value which is close to C1 like a two a escape pehle what value will be there before two close to c1 what value before two one one, one. one or you can take it as 1.5 okay a very close value we have to take so it 0.5 kit difference you can take one point and we have to find whether this just calculate no need to calculate it you have to just see the sign of this by substituting that also I will tell you an easy trick through factors. If you do it, it is very easily found out. Okay, when a question I will tell you. So what we take, we take the interval 
take this value value towards the right hana like this value and we take a we find the sign of f dash for that particular value conclusion is this is important if f dash 1.5 comes out positive if it comes out positive conclusion is function is increasing function is increasing and if f double f dash x comes out negative this is positive this is negative then the conclusion is function is decreasing this is the conclusion that we draw so now all the five five steps are written there there are five steps okay same way we do it for other intervals also so just go through this again i'll just take a question then so things will be clear one question i'll just write it down just go through it again once again if any confusion you can ask ma'am why did you take an open open interval open interval just it why open we are taking say so see why open interval because at this particular point this is a point c1 so this at this point the function is neither increasing nor decreasing it is changing its course are you getting the point jaise ye c1 pe aaya yahan pe function ceases to increase it changes at this particular point c1 the function is neither increasing nor decreasing that is why we have taken open interval because what is open interval this end point is not included so the reason is that this is very important in exam don't write close interval okay because at the critical points you can write, take this down why we are taking open, good question why we have taken this is a good question why we are taking open interval because at the turning points function is neither increasing nor decreasing so we are not including them okay so this you have done now that one question i will give you from that the things will be absolutely clear and one type of question only increasing decreasing function okay suppose the question is anybody having any doubt any other so the question is 